Hi, I'm Blair Gilbert, here for Gilbert's Pro Hardware in St. Clair Shores and MrHardware.com showing latest septic field installation with a surface style septic field. This is a system made with infiltrator drain tiles. These are plastic domes. Sewage is going to be coming in from a pump. We have a lift pump because the old septic field here is 35 years old. It's below grade. We're going to install this system in a new level. We are at a later date than we're going to lift tank. It's going to come to a perforated pipe with the holes in a 3 inch pipe which is suspended inside this dome with uh, 100 pound zip ties. getting ready to prep the infiltrator system. As you can see the infiltrator is a plastic dome with vent holes in it. You can see right through it. There is, there's an end cap. This is the four-way end cap. Locks in place. A couple screws are going to hold it in place. We drill holes in here so when we have our 90 on the inside our plumbing can come in, make a turn, and run down the infiltrator. What we're showing here how is how we are souping up the infiltrator system. We aren't just dumping affluent into the trench and letting the affluent meander down the trench. We are going to take and we're going to dump the affluent into some three-inch perforated pipe, thin wall pipe. The holes are a little bit off-center. So what we're doing is we're putting the holes down and we're going to tip the holes slightly towards the center of this infiltrator. We're going to drill a couple of holes because we're going to hold the pipe to one side or the other of the system to put industrial strength zip ties in. So we secure the pipe inside the infiltrator. Okay, not too securely so we can rotate and move the pipe so that when we put this in the trench we have our elbow we can come back and forth with the pipe to the elbow lines up the hole that we're going to drill in the end cap. Now this system can be filled from the end of the system also not just from the sides and then these top ports here are for inspections so we can drill this out and put an inspection port in here. We'll show you how that goes. So as this gets installed, the zip ties are tightened. Then the next piece of pipe is going to be installed. You can see our zip tie is holding our PVC in the air. Bingo. We'll drill this one and we'll zip tie it. We'll attach another piece of PVC and we'll march on down the road and get this whole length installed in the trench. Assembled the crossover, the input water is going to come in, it's going to feed the center of the three legs. So here's our center input, I'm going to plunk this in the hole and then we'll glue our two outside rails in and away we go. drilling and prepping the pipe so we can put a zip tie. I want the pipe with the holes favoring the bottom Yes, sir. and the right hand holes down a little bit. Do you notice the pipe that you're hooking into? Yes. Do you see the right hand holes pointing down to the right yes. towards the center of the trench? Put that in the same way. Rotate it back. I only want it favoring it. I don't want them pointing straight down. Roll it to me just a little bit. Right there. Now we're talking. When we assemble this pipe, it's 
snaps together underneath that lip so that they lock in place. Where's that drill at? So here we are at the end of the trench. Our fluent is going to come flying down this pipe. So what we're going to do is we're going to put an end cap. That way as we flood the system, when it gets doused, <coughs> this will take and keep us from digging a hole at the very end of the system. The comrades behind me were filling in the trench. We're compacting it up to the top of the vents on the pipe. And this end cap to help keep oxygen in the system, which helps benefit having a little air in here allows this. So what we're going to do is we have a four inch pipe go from trench to trench to trench on the end. I may punch a vent in the top of this coming in the surface. We bury it, we got one leg done already. We're going to see if we can't compact underneath this a little bit, you know, as we put the dirt in yet the trunk. Okay. So we're putting the crossover pipes in at the end of the field for airflow to help get air and in my end cap we're throwing in just a couple of screws just to tie it together. We're going to put a screw into the pipe to keep it from being able to shift out just so they can't slide back and forth. Alright it's 2 o'clock. We started at 10. It's hard to believe that in four hours this team of guys dug this trench laid this pipe and got the system in. We're not covering it up until we get our final inspection. And we'll show you where the input is. This elbow, this is going to be where our incoming water is going to come in from our dousing tank. Well, this is going to go to a 200 gallon tank with a half horsepower sewage ejection pump. It's going to be set so it pumps about 75 gallons a cycle. 75 gallons of water is going to come into this tee, disperse these three legs plug the system to the ends where there's end caps. The end caps have been tied together to help allow air intrusion. I just may put a riser out of the ground and build a little lighthouse or something around it so I have air constantly coming into the system. So it should flood the whole system. I just have a dump right in the I end. Know. And let it flow down the and dirt. And let it just kind of fall in here and if it doesn't soak in there. And if I'm flooding this, two inch pipe comes in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to dose the whole field. Which is and also, okay, so the back. two inch goes into the three inch. Three inch is running through the middle of this. You thing. can see the end of it here. This could be my lighthouse venting system. It's an observation. And I kept the end of it. Yep. So when it hits, it won't dig a hole down at this end. It's an observation. Make sure that it's dry in there. So there are six foot centers. Yep. This, we've got, not only do we, do we have a larger um, bed area with this, but we also have the venting on the side. So it's even more interface area that actually takes longer to clog up. And the stone, when you got a piece of stone on the dirt, that actually takes up a little bit of space. It's all the void spaces between the stones that actually, where the um, water goes. It's not all air. This yeah. is all air. This is all all air. Yeah, like I say, there's there's no stone sitting there taking oh, up space. Right. So actually got even more square footage in here as far as uh, infiltrative oh. surface. Use three so I could actually get the affluent maybe to pound all the way to the far end of the system, fill that perf pipe up, rain the trench. Yep. I'll get a perfect, pretty close to a perfect dose, I think. As soon as I get the tank and I'm going to have a sump pump, I'm going to fill the tank. I'll be interested to tell us to Let's see what see it looks like right there. Water yeah. you actually see. see if it makes it. Make it, right? right. It, may, it may not make it all the way down. Yeah, you know, it's like say 100 gallons or whatever you're going to dose, you know, might not get that far. Right, which is a good thing. Yeah. You might only be dosing half of it, and then when the time comes, it'll actually find its way down to the end. Half a gallon of plug. I got 45 gallons theoretically up. 22 feet. Home pipe wrap over this pipe. Help keep frost off of it. I think you're going to be okay as long as those holes are such that. Most of the water can't stand, so it drain. actually drain. Yep. And then what we also do, we call it a gooseneck, where we actually turn that thing up, point it straight up. Either I go up or I go down. Come up and then go down, it makes an air break. And when the pump turns off, this water's going to go that way. That wasn't going to put a 
check valve. That, that's good. Or a weep hole or something like that. When it turns off, you get a few gallons coming back. Right and then there's a 75-gallon kick on. One gallon goes backwards, who cares, Or right? five gallons or whatever. You want to try and keep the water out of here, okay? Right. And out of, out of the, the so line. So either I was going to go down if I set the tank. When I set the tank, when the hole, wherever the hole is there, that's going to make my decision. And if it's downhill, that'd be good for me. I'll just go from here slightly downhill. And then when that shuts off, everything drains back. I'm not going to short cycle the 75-gallon cycle. I was going to run uh, water in here to help compact the dirt under the pipes so that these can't sag. Output's here of 42 inches, okay. about 60 inches high. You put the tank right here, boom. I got a 15-inch extension. Yep. So well, I go down to it. Right so, so you're just going to see the lid. I'm going to come from here, probably a foot drop. All of the leach field, perforated 3-inch pipe we installed in here with the holes, that's going to cause the water to rain into all these protected trenches by these infiltrator domes. We attach the 3-inch drain tile with the holes in it. We zip tied it with industrial zip ties to the bottom of the infiltrator. So our pipe is actually hung 2 inches in the air above the earth so that as this system gets doused, there will be a lot of surface area for that area to flood and leach into the ground and percolate away.